The Democratic Alliance has filed papers in the Gauteng High Court in Pretoria seeking a declaratory order for government to effect an arrest against Russian President Vladimir Putin if he arrives in South Africa to attend the BRICS summit. As obligated by the Rome Statute, Putin is wanted for alleged crime, war crimes in Ukraine by the International Criminal Court. Now, South Africa is scheduled to host the BRICS summit in August where Putin is expected to attend. However, the country, which is a signatory to the Rome Statute has adopted a non-partisan stance on the global conflict. Meanwhile, Durko has requested diplomatic immunities and privileges for the upcoming BRICS summit and the ministerial leg, a standard conferment for all international gatherings in South Africa. However, Durko spokesperson Clayson Monyela has clarified that these immunities do not override any warrant that may have been issued by any international uh, tribunal against any attendee of the conflict. Conference. Let's now chat to the DA's advocate, Clinis Breitenbach, who joins us live now. Thank you so much for your time. How confident are you that the court's decision will be adhered to this time, given what happened in the past with Omar Al Bashir? Uh, good afternoon. Yeah, well, you know, that, that's, that is a problem. Um, the Al Bashir debacle uh, taught us a lot. That's why, you know, we're going to court with a, a preemptory uh, action. Uh, we apply for a declaratory order um, so that, you know, there will be legal certainty as to what the obligations of the South African government are with regards to the attendance of Putin at the BRICS summit, uh, uh, you know, as opposed to their obligations in terms of yeah, our international obligations and our obligations in terms of our own domestic law. Hmm. Uh, so the declarator will hopefully bring certainty to that position. Um, you know, the government took uh, quite a, a bashing um, over their, over their really their shameful actions with regards to Al Bashir, and uh, so we we're hoping that there won't be a repetition. Certainly, if there's a, a declarator in place, and the and the court has set out very clearly what their obligations are, uh, it will be very difficult for the government then to, to simply thumb their nose at those obligations. Uh, we already know that there's a, a warrant issued by the International Criminal Court for Putin's arrest. And if he comes to South Africa and there's a request to detain him and hand him over, uh, it will be very hard for the government to refuse that in the face of a pre-existing uh, declarator. Now, the, the presidency has said very recently as well that, uh, you know, there, there are engagements at various levels over this particular visit and they are then going to be looking into this particular issue. What about that also makes you uncertain that whatever it is that they discuss and whatever it is that they're engaging in may not be the outcome that the DA is expecting? Oh, you know, we've asked a variety of parliamentary questions. Um, the leader of the official opposition, uh, John Stienhausen, has asked questions in Parliament, uh, and and we've asked uh, other parliamentary questions, and we've gotten the runaround. There have be, been no definitive answers, um, and the position of the government is is far from clear. You know, not only on this issue, just generally speaking, but particularly on this issue, mm. uh, their position is is very unclear. Uh, while our position in law is very clear, we have international obligations. We were a founding signatory of the Rome Statute. Uh, we were one of the first and one of the few countries who has domesticated it. We have obligations in terms of our own domestic law. And uh, this is a constitutional democracy. So no one is above the law, not the government, not anybody else. And, and so if Putin comes, uh, in our view, we will be, and, and the warrant is still in existence and there's a request to detain him, uh, South Africa will have, legally speaking, absolutely no choice but to arrest him. So the obvious way out of this is to withdraw the invitation for Putin to come to South Africa. You know, that would, uh, that would solve all of these problems. What about, you know, some of the concerns that have been raised that the way the ICC is doing its work, and I'm sure you've seen and heard these in the public domain, that it's actually not on an equal footing. There's some who it skirts around and there are others when it comes to African leaders in particular, um, you know, as some were saying that, you know, they choose who they go after, uh, after but they do not go after everyone. Of course, that, that is a criticism that has been leveled, and it may well be a legitimate criticism. Um, but the view of the Democratic Alliance is simply this, that 
uh, that type of perception cannot be addressed from outside of the ICC. So there's there's no point in withdrawing from the Rome Statute and then, you know, uh, from outside trying to throw rocks in. Uh, while we are founding members and while we have domesticated and while we have a certain amount of standing in that community, we should engage with the ICC and uh, and discuss our concerns, uh, you know, and and point out to them that there's a view that they don't act even handedly and, and try very hard to uh, work on that image of the ICC, uh, try very hard to uh, place pressure when necessary so that a more even handed approach is adopted. How uh, does but that doesn't mean that we don't have obligations in terms of international law and our domestic law. We still have those obligations and we can't ignore them because we don't like what the ICC does. Uh, Advocate uh, Bretenbach, how then does the Democratic Alliance react to the granting of diplomatic immunity to all BRICS summit attendees? Of course, we've seen this, um, you know, being much talked about. And, uh, you know, the Department of Doku is saying that this doesn't even, um, you know, concern the president of Russia. But for them, this is standard procedure and it's been done before. Well, you know, there's a variety of things wrong with, with that approach. So, first of all, uh, there's South African law. Uh, current and binding South African law, uh, the latest is the Bushiri judgment, uh, where the court makes it very clear that the, that the government cannot circumvent its international obligations uh, by just granting immunity uh, willy-nilly. So, uh, you know, that, that isn't a solution to the problem. It may sound like one, but it isn't one. It has, it, it will not provide the protection that they're hoping it will provide. They and, do say, uh, though, that it's it, not it, going it, to... Pardon me, pardon me, pardon me for coming in there. Putin is not, uh, Putin is not attending uh, this summit as a guest of the South African government. Mm. He's here as part of BRICS. So that immunity cannot possibly be extended to him. They do say it doesn't trump what is happening on an international scale. But of course, there are some who are raising concern about the granting of this particular immunity. Well, of course, it's, uh, it's very obvious what they're trying to do, but there's no basis for it in law. And I'm quite sure that it's one of the things that we'll argue uh, when we argue the declarator, I mean, it's, mm. it's, um, it's so it's so pathetically transparent. All right. So let's see then what happens, um, of course, with this particular matter. And we'll continue to watch and see what's happening in the courts. The papers have been filed today and uh, we'll continue then to see what is happening with this particular story. And that was the DA's advocate, Clinis Breitenbach.